the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with It's High Time. Jimmy, and don't you dare track dirt and mud across my kitchen floor either. I just scrubbed it. Oh, that's too bad, Jimmy. Too bad the game has to end, and too bad your mom is still doing that old-fashioned floor scrubbing. Now, if that floor were protected with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat, she wouldn't have to worry about your tracking in little dirt because it would wipe up so easily with a damp cloth. Besides, she wouldn't be so tired and cross and worn out with that tiresome scrubbing. And, of course, someone should tell her that continuous scrubbing finally ruins linoleum, whereas Glow Coat protects it, keeps it new-looking and beautiful, makes it last longer, besides saving her hours of work. Glow Coat is self-polishing, needs no rubbing or buffing. Jimmy, why don't you ask your mother to buy a can of Johnson's self-polishing Glow Coat? She'll always thank you for it. This is the time of year when every born angler gets out the box of tackle and the old bamboo for a little living room fishing. And here at 79 Wistful Vista, where the master of the house is reviewing his past glories as a trout trapper, we meet Fibber McGee and Molly. Boy, look at the whip on that trout rod, will you? It's as springy and supple as the day I won it. Say, uh, how did you win it? I don't remember. Sure you do. I won it in that contest. What contest? Oh, you know, Molly. Finishing that sentence, I like Barker's dog biscuits because... <laughs> well, uh, why did you like them? You never give me a chance to find out. You made me quit eating them. <laughs> Why, of course I did. It got so every time we had lamb chops, you'd run outdoors and bury the bones. <laughs> I thought you said it was because I started chasing cats. Well, it was both. Then what's more, dearie? Huh? Boy, is this a trout rod. Or say we go fishing over the weekend. You go, dearie. Don't you want to go? I don't believe so. Standing girdle deep in an icy creek and uh, getting sinkers caught in my hairnet has sort of lost its fascination for me. I'm not as young as we were. <laughs> You always used to tell me how you love to go fishing. You says you and that old boyfriend of yours, Otis Cadwallader, used to go fishing every spring. Well, that was a long time ago, dearie. Ah, but it was fun, though. Otis used to let me row the boat whilst he fished. Oh, he let you row the boat? Sure. Well, there's a gentleman for you. <laughs> he didn't want his little snooky wookie spraining her back hauling in them two-ounce sunfish. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, McGee, I do believe you're still jealous of Otis Cadwallader. No, I never know such a thing. And as for him being a fisherman, poof. What? Why that doe face couldn't catch an anchovy in a plate of hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> yeah. Well, everybody but you admires him. You know he started on a shoestring and made a fortune. Yeah, there's a heel behind every shoestring. <laughs> well, now, just because Otis used to be my boyfriend doesn't mean he wasn't a nice boy. Ever wish you'd married him instead of me? Not for a minute, dearie. Honest? Cross my heart. I'd rather worry about the grocery bill with you than about paying the out with him. <laughs> you know that. Yeah, I guess old Otis ain't a bad guy. As millionaires go. And the farther he goes, the better I'll like it. 
You sure you don't want to go fishing with me? No, thank you. I got so many things to do around the house that I... Come in. Telegram for Mrs. Fibber McGee. Heavenly days for me. Yes, ma'am. Sign here, please. All right. There you are. Give the lad a quarter, McGee. Okay, here you are, bud. Gee, couldn't you make it a nickel instead? A nickel? Yeah, I got some swell wisecracks for guys who only give me a nickel. <laughs> Look, bud, the reason Vaudeville never came back is because guys would rather have a nickel and a wisecrack than two bits and a smart exit. <laughs> now, scram, will you? <laughs> Who's it from, Molly? Oh, for goodness sake, if this isn't a coincidence. What do you mean, coincidence? Does it say Vaudeville is back? <laughs> no, sir, it's for Motus Cadwallader. Oh. What's that smug mug sending you telegrams about? Some fortune die and leave him an uncle? <laughs> Look, it's from Portland, Oregon. Well, that shows how ignorant he is. Portland ain't in Oregon, it's in Maine. <laughs> Well, now there's another one in Oregon. Well, it could be the same one. I read in the sports section today that Cleveland is in St. Louis this week. <laughs> well, what seems to be flickering your old flame now? Listen, it says, caught record-breaking salmon and thought you would like to have it in memory of old days. What? Am sending it Air Express arriving Tuesday afternoon. Oh. Regards to you and Stinky. <laughs> And it's signed Otis Cadwallader. Well, I'll Wasn't be... that sweet, McGee? Otis always was so sentimental. Oh. Why, he even remembered your boyhood nickname. Yeah, well, I remember his, too, but I'd get pinched if I ever sent it in a telegram. <laughs> Say, how big would a record-breaking salmon be, dearie? Well, it depends on what records it broke. If it was high-jumping, and what? it'd be light and thin. <laughs> if oh. it was a shot putting or a Oh, ring, now it's... stop clowning. Oh, well. Would it be 20 pounds, 50 pounds, or 100 pounds? I don't know, 40, 45 pounds, I guess. What are we going to do with all that fish? Well, we can eat what we want and give the rest to our friends. Mm. He's sending it to Air Express, so it'll be nice and fresh. Air Express, eh? That was the way the stork brought Otis, too, and look how fresh he stayed. <laughs> Go call the airport and see what time the afternoon plane gets in here. Oh, okay. Give me the phone. Here. Thanks. Hello, operator. Give me the whistle, Vista. Oh, is that you, Mert? Uh... <laughs> How's every little thing, Mert? There's, eh? What say, Mert? You're married, sister. Honest? Three of them, eh? Oh! Boy, that's terrific. Oh, my. <laughs> well, what hospital, you say? Heavenly days, McGee. You yeah, don't mean that, Molly. Mert's sister was driving past the hospital this morning and had three blowouts in one block. <laughs> hey, Mert, what time's the afternoon plane come in? Oh, thanks, Mert. 5.52, Molly. Fine. Now, look, here's what we'll do. <clears throat> we'll give a salmon dinner for all our friends. Oh, I don't want now, to. Now, start calling people up and invite them. First, Mrs. Upton. Yeah, but look, how are we And then Mr. To... Wilcox and Mr. Mills and the Wimples who and wants the old guy. Yeah.
you'll drop over and get some more details about this affair, Mrs. McGee. I didn't realize you were so interested in needlework. Needlework? This has nothing to do with needlework, Abigail. But Mr. McGee said over the telephone that we were going to sew and sew and sew until we... I did not, Uppy. I said some old so-and-so was sending us a fish. <laughs> and we couldn't eat it all ourselves. <laughs> well, really... I'm afraid, Mr. McGee, you don't enunciate very clearly. It's a good thing I don't, or they'd be taking our phone out. (laughs) McGee's a little jealous, Mrs. Uppington. (laughs) The man who's sending us this big salmon is an old flame of mine. Oh, (laughs) my. Well, there must be a little spark of love still burning. (laughs) (laughs) That big clinker keeps smoldering. He's going to make an awful ash of himself. Now, McGee, just because you never caught a record-breaking fish... I'm not so sure he did either. I'll bet he bought a dozen cans of salmon and reconstructed it. <laughs> oh, tell me, Mrs. McGee, who is this fascinating chap? Fascinating my eye. He's got all the charm and personality of leftover spaghetti. <laughs> with meatballs. <laughs> well, his name is Otis Cadwallader, Abigail. And he used to... My dear, not the Otis Cadwallader... The millionaire sportsman? What do you mean, sportsman? That guy won't even play bridge unless him and his partner can wear headphones. Now, McGee, you're really exaggerating there. He and his brother wanted to hear Bob Hope that night. (laughs) So we the people lost 22 bucks. See, uh... How did you know about Mr. Cadwallader, Abigail? Oh, my dear. I'm constantly reading about him in the fashionable magazines. Oh, is he really as handsome as his photograph? Well, <laughs> he's pretty good looking. Wouldn't you say so, dearie? Not even if I thought so. Not even if I thought so. And I don't think so. Oh, oh Mrs. McGee, you... Oh, you unfortunate girl, you. What? Why, Abigail? Oh, to think that you once had Otis Cadwallader in your grasp and you passed him up for such a little... Such a little what? Oh, um... Oh, oh, my, such a little time before dinner. I must be going. (laughs) Goodbye. Cadwallader and his salmon. Got me talking like a salmon. Believe me, if I was still interested in a gal that had married somebody else, I'd send her something more romantic than a fish. Say, I never thought of it that way, McGee. It is kind of silly, isn't it? I'll say it is. What do you woo you with? Bouquets of herring and a ten-pound box of Whitman sardines? Well, you and he were about even, dearie. Huh? <laughs> Your idea of a beautiful courtship was a ride on the roller coaster and five boxes of Cracker Jack. <laughs> That was quite a sacrifice for me. The roller coaster always made me sick. <laughs> Why, of course it did. You ate all the Cracker Jack. Well, shucks, how can I... Come in. Hello, kids. What's all this about a fish dinner tonight? That's right, old-timer. We're getting the big fish from Oregon this evening. It's coming by air. Oh, flying fish, eh? <laughs> no, no, it's a salmon. Oh, well, what time we march up to the trough tonight, daughter? Well, now, that's, that's not a very elegant way to express it, Mr. Oldtimer, but the fish will be here about 6, so we'll eat about 6.30. You'll be here? Oh, sure will, daughter. Unless some unforeseen circumstance comes up, and I don't know what it'd be unless my cousin Clarence comes in from Cincinnati, and he might because he wired me to get him a date for tonight, and the only one I could get was my gal's sister, and only she won't go out unless my gal goes too, and I wouldn't trust cousin Clarence with my gal, so I guess I better go along and keep an eye on her. Sorry, kids. An unforeseen circumstance has just come up. Thanks. Why, that old twerp, him and his dates. He either ought to grow up or give up. Look, McGee, did you ask Mr. Wilcox and Billy Mills to this dinner? Yep. Wilcox will be here for sure, I think, and Billy will... Hey, Molly. Yes, Mr. Wilcox. Let me see that trout we're having for dinner. It's not a trout, Harlow. It's a salmon. <laughs> Oh, I thought it was a trout. Well, uh, why'd you want to see it, Mr. Wilcox? Oh, I was going to tell you the best way to cook trout. 
Oh, yeah? You were going to tell her how to cook. <laughs> you tell him how to sell wax then, Molly. Well, now, don't think I couldn't. Could you really? Why, certainly I could. Look, Mr. Wilcox, every woman wants to be beautiful. Yes? So point, point out how much more time and money she'll have for facials and manicures when Johnson's Wax cuts down her housework and gives her more leisure and a bigger budget. You see? Uh, if they got more exercise, they wouldn't have such a big bu... Oh! <laughs> Oh, you mean budget. <laughs> oh. Go on, Molly. Shall I go on? Uh, well, then, uh, <laughs> tell them how much more fun it is to entertain when their house or apartment is shining and beautiful and easy to clean. Mm -hmm. And how windowsills and lampshades and everything are protected against wear and dirt and dampness. Mm. That's how I'd sell Johnson's wax. Yeah. Now, you tell us how to cook a fish. <laughs> Well, look, you take your trout... It isn't a trout, it's a salmon. But if it was a trout, you'd simply roll it in cornmeal. That brat, it ain't a trout. I know, but if it was... Look, look, Mr. Wilcox, when we have salmon, it's no use telling us how to cook trout. Yeah. Like when we want Johnson's wax, it's no use trying to sell us something else. That's what I wanted to hear you say. Never accept a substitute when you want the oh. real thing. Well, that ends today's lesson, folks. See you tonight. That guy should ought to have been a jockey, Molly. <laughs> he rides a plug harder than Eddie R. Carl. I don't even believe he knows how to cook. That was just an excuse to talk about wax. I know, but let us remember. Oh, lettuce, lettuce. That's what I've been trying to think of. Huh? McGee, run down to the grocery store and get me a head of lettuce. Oh, call him up and ask him to deliver it. No, you go get it. It'll give you an excuse to wear your new hat. Huh? Oh, oh, that's right. Here, let me put it on. <laughs> How's it look? Oh, wonderful. It looks just like Anthony Eden. <laughs> well, better. I got more. Hey. Oh, heavenly days. What was that? Kids must be playing baseball next door again. Look, here's the ball. I'll fix them. Now, take it easy, dear. You wait. I'll teach them kids they can't do. Hi, mister. Oh, oh, hello there, little girl. Did you see anything of a baseball, mister? Hmm, did you, hmm? What do you mean, did I see anything of a baseball? You just busted our window with it. I know it. Willie Toop said girls didn't know how to play baseball, so I took his bat and, gee, baby, did I harm that old apple right out of the park. <laughs> That's neither here nor there, sis. Who's going to pay for that window? You are, betcha. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, why should I pay for it? <laughs> well, we paid for the baseball. You ought to pay for the window. <laughs> I see. Well, why don't I buy you kids a new ball, too, and some uniforms and new bats and masks and catcher's mitts and all stuff like that there? Gee, that'd be wonderful, mister. When you gonna do it? When you gonna do it? When you gonna do it? I'm not gonna do it. I just told oh, you... Oh, hey, Mr. McGee, you got a new hat. Oh, yeah. You like it? Mm, it's peachy. <laughs> Gee, you look dandy in a hat like that. Oh, thanks, sis. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> Here, take your baseball. <laughs> be a little more careful after this. All righty. Thank you, mister. I knew you wouldn't be mean about it. I bet you, Connie, Connie, you look so nice in that hat. <laughs> you really think so, eh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, here, here's 50 cents for a new ball, too. See, you're just wonderful, mister. And I didn't know you were so good looking until I saw you in that expensive new hat. Oh, it ain't so expensive, sis. It's, uh, it's the way I wear it. Oh. <laughs> here's a couple of bucks for your team. Get a couple of gloves. Gee, thank you, mister. Well, I tell the kids, we'll make you mascot. We need a new one anyway. You do? Mm-hmm. The dog catcher got the last one. Oh. Well, thanks ever so much, mister. And I'm sorry it isn't wintertime so we could throw snowballs at your new hat because we wouldn't do it, I bet you. <laughs> well, that's mighty decent of you, sis. Well, it's a mighty decent hat, mister. <laughs> Is it a Fedora? No. No, it's a Hamburg. Hmm? It's a Hamburg. I'm hungry. Oh. <laughs> The Kingsmen sing Mush Mush. Twas there I learned reading 
and riding. And back it's where I went to school. Twas there I learned howling and fighting from me schoolmaster, Mr. O'Toole. Him and me, we had many a scrimmage and devil the copy I wrote. There's never a gossoon in the village. Dark red on the tail of me. Mush, 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 to the laddie. Mush, 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 to the laddie. And there's never a gossoon in the village. Dark red on the tail of me coat. Twas then that I learned all me courting. Oh, the lessons I took in the art. Till Cupid, the devil, was sporting. And I would go straight through me heart. Miss O'Connor, she lived just for Miss Me. And tender lines to her I wrote. If you do say a hard word again, her, I'll tread on the tail of your mush, mush, mush to a lady. Mush, mush, mush to a lady. If you do say a hard word again, her, I'll tread on the tail of your coat. Then a blackguard named Mickey Maloney came and stole her affection away. He had money and I hadn't any, so I sent him a challenge next day. In the AM we met in Killarney, the Shannon we crossed in a boat, and I lathered him with me shillelagh, for he trod on the tail of me, mush, 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 to the laddie. Sing mush, 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 to the laddie, and I lathered him with me shillelagh. For he trod on the tail of me coat. Me fame went abroad through the nation. The people came flocking to see, and they exclaimed without hesitation, "You're a fighting man, Mr. McGee." I've wiped out the panic and faction. I've sunk all the Murphys afloat. If you're in for a row or a ruction, just tread on the tail of me, mush, 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 to the laddie. Sing mush, 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 to the laddie. If you're in for a row or a ruction, just tread on the tail of me, Hey, Fibber, Molly, when do we eat? Yeah, what about this fish we were going Now, 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 take it easy, everybody. We just phoned the airport, and they says the plane was slightly delayed on account of rain. Oh, good heavens. What's a little rain to a salmon? Yeah, <laughs> yeah excuse me. Excuse me, McGee. May I have a word with you? Why, sure, Gildersleeve. Just step over here for a minute. Hey, Molly, you better put out some more olives and potato chips. This mob's getting unruly. All right, Gildersleeve. What you want, Gildersleeve? Want to give me a cigar or something? No. I want to give you a little advice. Huh? The next time you invite people to a 6.30 fish dinner, have it at 6.30, will you? By George, here it is, 7.15, and I'm so hungry now, that I... Now, 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 take it easy, Frocky. Well... We can't help it if the fish don't get here on the... I won't we... take it easy. I'm hungry, and when I'm hungry, I don't feel good. I've got a half a mind to walk out of here and go to a restaurant. <laughs> you had half a mind, you'd sit down and relax, you big glutton. Now, look here, McGee. Isn't it enough that you invite me out here and starve me without insulting all oh, there, Mrs. McGee? Say, what goes on here? This, quote, guest, unquote, <laughs> of ours is Ellie Bay Aiken about the delay. Well... Oh, for goodness sakes, Mr. Gildersleeve, it won't be much longer. Have some more olives. I don't want any more olives. I've eaten so many now, I feel like a pinball game. <laughs> Don't worry, you ain't any pinball game. You can win with one of those. Ooh. That settles that I'm going home. Okay, go on home then, you big whiner. Why, you inhospitable little hen house Hibernian. What do you mean, hen house Hibernian? Shanty Irish, but he cleaned it up. <laughs> Boys, I don't want oh, to have... Oh, I'll bet that's the fish. Goody, I'll run out and turn on the oven, little chum. No, the oven is already hot, Mr. Gildersleeve. Come on, McGee, let's go to the door. Okay. I'll take it easy. Hey, don't go crying. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, hi, Wimple. Well, heavenly day. <laughs> we thought you were the fish. <laughs> 
Just won't you come in and sit down, Mr. Wimple? Oh, I'm sorry, folks, but I just can't. Oh. <laughs> oh, you can't, Mr. Wimple. No, I, I'm terribly sorry. Mrs. Wimple and I had intended to come, but at the last minute, she changed our mind. <laughs> Well, as long as you're here, you might as well stay, Wimple. She wouldn't care, would she? Oh, yes, she would, Mr. McGee. <laughs> she, she just fly into one of her tantrums, I'm afraid. Oh. Well, what does she do in her tantrums, Mr. Wimple? Oh, she just stands there and stamps her foot at me. <laughs> well, that ain't so fearful, is it? It wouldn't be if I could only roll out of the way quicker. <laughs> I'm sorry if I've discommoded you, Mrs. McGee, but Mrs. Wimple and I have decided to spend a quiet evening at home. A quiet evening, Wimple? Yes. My wife is going to read to me. Oh. Well, now, isn't that sweet? What does she read to you, Mr. Wimple? Oh, the usual thing. The riot act. Good night. <laughs> My goodness, dearie, what's delaying that sand? I don't know. They says as soon as the plane landed, they were going to rush it right over here by motorcycle. Maybe I better call up the airport again. And... Oh, look, McGee, there it is. It's a messenger with a big package. Hot dog. Hey, everybody. It's here. It's here. Oh, boy. Oh, come on. Here it is. Give me that package, bud. Thanks. Unwrap it quick, McGee. We're all stars. Oh, I see. I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look. What is it, McGee? Let me see it, McGee. <laughs> well, heavenly day. <laughs> hey, look, folks. It's stuffed. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> stuffed and mounted on a board. <laughs> <laughs> hey, quiet, everybody. Wait a minute. Here's a brass plate on it. What does it say, dearie? It says, to my schoolgirl sweetheart, Molly McGee. Every time you look at this, please think of me. Signed, Otis Cadwallader. <laughs> Do you ever have spring fever? Ever say to yourself, my, but I feel so lazy today? Don't let it worry you if you do. You've got lots of company, including yours truly. Work is a great thing for everybody. Sometimes it's a lifesaver. But unnecessary work is, well, it's just unnecessary. Take your floors, for example. You could go on scrubbing your linoleum floors all your life, and what would it get you? Well, an aching back and red hands for yourself and ruined linoleum in the bargain. So, you wisely protect your floors with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Saving yourself unnecessary work, keeping your linoleum always bright and shining, and making it last longer. And with the hours of time you save with glow coat, you can do important things that perhaps you've had to neglect. Reading, playing with your children, seeing your friends. Johnson's glow coat saves you work because it is self-polishing. Needs no rubbing or buffing. Look for the familiar red and yellow glow coat package at your dealer's. Ladies and gentlemen, United States savings bonds are now on sale in post offices and banks everywhere. Buy as many as you can and be assured that your money is as safe as the nation itself. The country is banking on us, so let's bank on the country. And if you're one of our neighbors in Canada, buy a war savings certificate. Good night. Good night, all. This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Finishers for 